Welcome to Radiation Oncology. I am Dr. Beth Erickson, a radiation oncologist, and I look forward to introducing you to radiation. You will be referred here by one of our other cancer team members, and we look forward to introducing you to what you will experience. Dr. William Hall and I, my partner, will take you through this process in a number of steps. Just to familiarize you with what radiation oncologists do and are, we are medical doctors who are trained in the field of radiation oncology during our residency and sometimes a fellowship to follow to use radiation to treat cancer and other types of diseases. We are members of a big team, though, in radiation oncology. There are the radiation therapists who will be treating you every day on the linear accelerators, as well as the nurses who help us take care of you. And then there are the physicists and dosimetrists who help to create your radiation plans and also help keep and evolve the technology that we have in our department going to take good care of you and to do it safely. Your first step in meeting with us will be a consultation. And as mentioned, you'll be referred here by one of the surgical oncologists or medical oncologists. At that visit, we will do a series of questioning of questions for you and a physical exam. And then we will discuss the role of radiation in your care. Radiation may be used as a preoperative treatment. And the goal here is to make sure that the margins are clear so that when the surgeon removes your tumor, there's no cancer at that margin. Radiation also helps to decrease the likelihood that the lymph nodes that live near the pancreas contain active cancer cells. And both of those benefits of radiation improve local control and survival. This is probably the most typical use of radiation um, when you come to see us. If, however, your tumor is not surgically removable, we will talk with you about high dose or ablative radiation or dose escalated radiation. Those are all terms that we use when surgery is not possible, but we need higher doses of radiation to kill your tumor. There's a special type of radiation called SBRT, stereotactic body radiation therapy, that will be given in fewer but larger treatments over a series of a few weeks, whereas the typical preoperative radiation course is anywhere from three to five weeks, five days per week. Most of your radiation treatments will be given with chemotherapy, so the medical oncologist will stay very actively involved in your care during radiation. We may see some side effects during radiation, and these side effects relate to the fact that the radiation beams in the course of getting to your tumor traverse some of the normal organs. And those normal organs that uh, cause side effects are the stomach, the duodenum, and other parts of the small bowel. Our goal is to try to minimize those side effects. So we will talk about some things that you can do to make radiation well tolerated. One of them is that we'll ask you to take a nausea pill every day before your radiation treatment to prevent nausea. And then you can go ahead and take that again if you need it every six to eight hours afterwards. We'll also wanna make sure that you're on an acid medication because the radiation can cause a gnawing or kind of hungry type sensation in your upper abdomen about midway through the treatment course, and we wanna minimize that side effect for you. We'll also tell you that you should eat and not lose weight. If you lose too much weight during radiation, we have to replan the radiation, and we'd rather not put you through that. We also want you to get as much rest as possible, but you're free to do normal activities during radiation. You can go out to eat, you can do your shopping, go to church, social functions, uh, but know that you may feel a little bit more tired during all of this. It takes a couple of weeks to recover from radiation, and if you're going to be having surgery, we want to make sure that you recover well and that we deliver you in good shape to our surgeons so that there's no delay in having that surgery at about four weeks after radiation. 
Um, in terms of late or uh, long-term side effects from radiation, very few rare ulcers or bleeding from those loops of the stomach or bowel that are irradiated. But that's a very rare occurrence. And radiation is very safe with the modern technology that we use. Well, the next step in our uh, course of treatment for you is what we call simulation. And that's where you're going to have your radiation planning session. I'm going to turn that over to my great colleague, Dr. William Hall, who will take you through the steps of simulation next. See you soon. Hi, I'm Dr. William Hall, a radiation oncologist specializing in pancreatic cancer, as well as other gastrointestinal malignancies. Welcome to the CT simulator. This is the first step in the planning process for a personalized course of radiation therapy for pancreatic cancer. The CT simulator involves acquiring a CT scan using a CT that looks very, very similar to other diagnostic CTs that you may have had over the course of your diagnosis and treatment thus far. We have a very different process in the CT simulation than you may have seen in diagnostic simulators, though. And I want to walk you through some of what those differences might be. So the first thing here is you'll be with team members, as well as a radiation oncologist, that it will be involved with your treatment. Um, such as radiation therapists and other team members that, that may be involved with the process of simulation. During simulation, we will also be making an immobilization device, which is a personalized device that goes around your body to position you in the same position each day that you will be in for your daily radiation treatment. This is very important because it makes sure that the radiation is delivered very reproducibly and very accurately on the actual treatment machine. We also use the images from the CT simulator to plan out a customized radiation course for you with you in the exact position that you will be in daily, and the immobilization devices help to ensure that reproducibility of positioning. We can show you what one of those devices may look like. This is a picture of one here. Um, we usually kind of draw an analogy to, uh, a, it's almost like a bean bag where it's, it's a, a flexible material that a patient will lie in and then is immobilized or rigidly uh, fixed around their body. And then they lie in this each day to keep them in the general position that they were in at the time of the mapping session. A few other important things to know about the CT mapping process and the CT simulation process is that you will be coached and you will hear voices playing in the room during the CT sim that will be instructing you on your breathing. The breathing is very, very important for the process of receiving radiation because pancreatic tumors move significantly during the course of respiration. So an important step of mapping and designing your personalized course of radiation is understanding exactly how those pancreatic tumors move with your breathing. So we will be acquiring images of you while you are breathing and controlling your respiratory cycle. So that can be something to expect. You may be asked to take a deep breath and hold your breath, and then let your breath out at a very specific time during the scan. All along, we'll be watching you on the monitor. The radiation therapists do this multiple times a day, and the radiation oncologists supervise and uh, guide these simulations multiple times a day as well. So any confusion or discomfort or questions that you have about the process, there'll be multiple people here to help address those. Each day when you come for radiation treatment, a radiation therapist will get you from the waiting area and then bring you back toward the treatment machine. That's a great opportunity to touch base with the radiation therapist and any questions or concerns that you have about your treatment course or any symptoms that you're experiencing that are bothersome to you, you can certainly ex express them to the radiation therapist during that time or while you're getting back into the room. You'll then proceed into a linear accelerator. The first thing that you'll probably notice is the strikingly large door that's present at the linear accelerator. This is really part of protecting the staff and the therapists and the other patients and the, and the people that are in the hospital from any radiation exposure that may come out of the machine. There's no radioactivity, though, until the machine is actually turned on. So the door will close when you're in the machine to protect the rest of the staff and the members that are in the hospital and, and other um, individuals that are in the care team. So as you walk toward the treatment machine, you'll notice that there's a treatment console. You're going to see lots of computer monitors and lots of different monitoring devices 
that enable us to monitor patients who are undergoing radiation therapy with camera systems and also able us to review images that are acquired on a daily basis to ensure that your treatment is guided and very accurately delivered as it was originally planned from your CT simulation mapping session. You'll also see other team members there. Sometimes they'll be radiation therapy students or other radiation therapists, and occasionally your radiation oncologist will be there reviewing images depending on uh, the time or the, or the uh, sequencing of the actual treatments. It's worth knowing that your first treatment is often the longest treatment. And the reason for that is because we have to do lots of additional checks and measurements and image checks to make sure that everything is lining up perfectly. Let me go ahead and show you inside the radiation therapy treatment machine so you can have a sense what to expect for your daily treatments as you're receiving them. So each day you'll come back for radiation treatment and walk into the treatment room through that thick door that I was referring to. You'll then come back and see the radiation treatment machine. This is a very typical appearing radiation machine, and this is something that you'll come back each day and be positioned for your daily radiation treatment on the same immobilization device that you made at the time of the CT simulation. The radiation therapist will then ensure that you're comfortable and that you don't have any concerns, and they will exit the room and close the door to begin your daily radiation treatment. Of note, when we do step outside of the room, like Dr. Hall stated, we do close that door that you saw, but we have cameras and monitors on you at all times. So we are always observing you, making sure everything is going well. We also have audio between the room so that we can speak to you through a microphone or we can hear you if you speak loud enough and shout out for us. Um, know that we can stop the radiation and be right in the room in a matter of moments. The goal is really to make sure that you feel comfortable, relaxed, and are successfully able to lie still for your daily radiation treatment without any concerns. We don't ever anticipate that you would need anything while in this room, but just know that we always are watching and can hear you if anything would come up. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed your tour with Dr. Hall and learned about the simulation process and what radiation treatments are all about. We don't want you to be afraid of what we do. We're gonna take great care of you while you're here with us. You have a whole team around you who will make sure that happens. And we feel it is an honor to care for you and want to do everything that we can to make cancer part of your past history. Thank you for allowing us to do that.